Well, joining me now to discuss the gender pay gap in China is Yan Liang. She's an associate professor of economics at Willamette University in Oregon. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Rochelle. So give us some background. Just how did China's gender pay gap develop to this point as the country opened up? So uh, under the socialism regime, especially, you know, in the Mao's uh, regime, um, you know, we often heard that proclamation that, you know, women hold up half the sky. And also, you know, in the 90s, when China really needed to, you know, um, develop its economy, women are encouraged to enter the job market, you know, to participate um, at, at the, you know, market. Um, but I think at this point, you know, we're still looking at about 23 percent of the gender wage gap, um, which is a par with, you know, countries like UK and um, United States, which is also better than the global average of about 64 percent. So in that regard, I think China is doing relatively well, um, but there's still a long way to go, especially we have seen a widening in the gender wage gap in the recent years. Um, so I think, you know, like in the introductory section, China needs to work on its legislation, its enforcement of these legislations in order to protect gender equal pay. Now, as you mentioned, it has been widening. Do you expect that trend to continue? And, and what's driving that widening? I think giving all else constant, it is possible that the trend is going to be widening. Um, I think that has a lot to do with technological advancements. Um, so women oftentimes are, you know, socialized into this perception that a lot of the high tech, you know, high intensity jobs are not feminine jobs. Um, for example, uh, less than tw uh, less than 20 percent of the workforce in the AI and uh, big data industries are occupied by women. So some of these jobs are high pay, but they are also, you know, technological intensive. They are also very high demanding in terms of their work schedules. And so I think a lot of times women are, um, you know, hesitant to enter these industries. Uh, we're also talking about, you know, in some of the high tech industries, um, people are talking about 996 work schedule, you know, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., working six days a week. And a lot of times I think women, because they're taking on more traditional roles of householding, you know, caring for children, um, they're forced out. Um, of these kinds of jobs. Now, I do want to get to this issue of, of changing the mindset. What is the biggest challenge in changing some of these social norms and stereotypes that employers have about women in the workforce? So I think there is really widespread, I would say, you know, these kind of social norms. You know, as some of the women and girls growing up, um, they are educated in a way that, you know, they shouldn't be too assertive, they shouldn't be too aggressive, they shouldn't be choosing some of the STEM work and so on and so forth. And then once they enter the uh, career, a lot of times they have to take time off of, uh, to take care of their families. Um, according to a recent survey, 30, 70 some percent of the respondents um, of women said, you know, they have to take time off of the family in order to take care of the, uh, take time off work in order to take care of their families. Um, right. You also see this from, you know, statistics. At the very beginning of their career, women often see only a 10 percent of the gender wage gap. But 15 years into the career, by they hit this mid-career age, women was far behind. Their gender wage gap reached about 40 percent um, than their male counterpart. Now, so now, I now, think, now to this yes, point, social, though, most, mm -hmm. people, most people aren't going around around telling other people how much they earn. So how should women go about finding out if they are being underpaid for the same job as their male counterparts? Right. I think the wage secrecy, um, it's a lot higher in a country like the United States than in China. Um, I think, as a matter of fact, in China, you know, informally or formally, people often talked about wages. So I think that pay, um, you know, transparency is relatively higher in China. That said, I do think that, you know, a lot of times, you know, um, there is outright discrimination at workplace. Women are told for varieties of reasons that they're getting less pay, um, even though they're performing the same type of jobs. And just quickly, we saw that, interestingly, uh, China leads the list of self-made female billionaires. How do you account for that, especially given the wage gap? Um, I think, you know, one of the biggest reasons for that, I think, is simply because, you know, China makes a lot of millionaire, uh, billionaires. Um, according to the last year's report, um, China is home for 338 billionaires. 
uh, which is about 12% of the world total. So I think, you know, the reason that China has so many self-made female billionaires is simply because China are making, is making a lot of billionaires. And also, if you look at the average wealth, um, the, the richest 50 women's average wealth, it's only one third of their male counterpart. So I think even though, you know, it is, uh, deserves celebration that we have so many female, you know, self-made billionaires, I don't think it's indicative of any sort of gender equality. All right, thank you so much for your insights. Yen Liang there, Associate Professor of Economics at Willamette University.